that SQL doesn't really work. Just what is the relationship between the two things? The, the relationship, it's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> it's something which is still mysterious to me. Um, I, I know that, you know, I know that at one point of my writing, you know, the world of prequel was quite useful, you know. I loved it, you know, I remember it was a very touching moment, you know, it was uh, during the funeral of Anna Rene, you know, and uh, Matthew Anna Rene was, we did few films with Anna Rene, was one of the, the actors carrying the coffee, you know. It was a beautiful sunny day, it was not sad, you know, because I accomplished so much, and I remember so well, you know, so the way it was sweet. You know, and I've been close, uh, I was you got to be very close to him at the end. Sorry? You got to be very close to him at the end. Yeah, 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 I admire him a lot. And, uh, and I've been to, 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 to go and see Matthew, and I told him actually, I think I, I could be writing a prequel of my sex life. Could happen, you know, because, you know, a few decades ago, you know, we, we invented a hero in a way. You know, so it could be interesting to have the early beginning of this hero, the, the birth of this hero. You know, so the, the, the world people, you know, coming from a genre, the genre of the superhero movies, you know, I think it was fun, it was just fun, it gave me the energy of writing. But after that, in the writing process, uh, I not, I never tried to be faithful to the film, you know, I never saw a gay, you know, my sex life. I remember, you know, when I met the, the two young actors, you know, they asked me, uh, they were in class, and they were arrogant, and, um, they didn't know at all where I was. You know. They said, do we have to see that film by sex life? They said, please. That old film. <laughs> that old film. You know. <laughs> please, you are not born. What's the point? What's the point? What's the point? What's the point? See the films of your generation. It be more interesting for you. More interesting for you. And uh, I guess that as soon as I left the room, they, they, you know, they stole the film by internet and they, they saw it. You know. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, they watched it on YouTube. Yeah, so they watched it on YouTube or something like that. But uh, I didn't try to be faithful to that. But though there was, you know, a sort of, of a mystery, you know, in, in, uh, in uh, my sex life, it's the narrator opening the film and opening the film saying these words, you know, uh, Paul and Esther are together since more than two years, ten years, and they don't get along since more than ten years. And I thought it's interesting to see the meeting of these two guys, you know, why they are a perfect match and why they don't get along at the same time. You know, so I thought it was a good material for a new novel. But then you're revisiting it, refracting it through a different age, because they're younger. They're, you're refracting it through a different age, because they're younger than in the original. Yeah, it's a different thing. It's, 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 it's a different thing. I'm, I'm happy, you know, with the... I, I love, you know, when, when it was released in France, I, I love that, you know, when people saw the, 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 this film and didn't see the, the previous one, you know, they are separated. You know, the two ambitions are quite different. You know, so, you know but the world people was helpful in my writing. You know, it was sort of brash attitude, you know, of uh, Matthew and I, you know, saying, okay, we intend to be here. You know, so let's go for it. You know, that was it. It's, it. And it's pretty striking to most people who've seen the film that you know, we're so used to seeing movies about adolescence and adolescent love. They're treated from a kind of a benign distance that's very indulgent and kind of paternalistic and where, you know, or <clears throat> that's kind of uh, dirty-minded, you know, instead of really getting into the violence of it, the violence of the feelings, which is something that's the core of this movie. Yeah, I, I guess. I don't know how to answer your question. You know, I guess that, you know, the at the very start of the movie, I didn't want to depict my own youth, you know, neither, you know, Paul's youth. What I was really eager to do was to work with a new generation. You know, uh, as I told you once, you know, I, I just worked, you know, with two major movie stars, one were Benicio del Toro and Matthew Amalric. And after that, just after that, I made this uh, uh, small film, you know, for French TV that I did, you know, which was an adaptation of a French or of a Russian uh, play, uh, sure, stage play the at the forest. The forest. Yeah, the forest. And it was with very experienced actors, you know, uh, actors coming from La Comédie Française, so skillful, you know, major actors, etc. And I thought, yes, but you know, I know how to write, I think I know how to write sometimes, not always, but sometimes good lines, you know, tricky lines, you know, funny monologues, you know, and ambiguous lines, you know, and 
But these lines are always professional writers, or people of my generation, or people in the 30s, which are using them. I might be, you know, and I remember the, 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 the shock you know, I had, I had a big burst of the writing process, and it was the, the, the Wes Anderson movie, Moon uh, um, you know. And I saw, oh, he's so lucky, because he found a way to give lines to actors who don't belong to his generation. You know, so, and that's why I didn't want them to see my sex life, you know, because I want them to use my lines to depict their own generation, to bring their own rage, their own frustration, you know. Uh, so that was, yeah, you know, my goal. But, trip to the former Soviet Union, Belarus and Tajikistan seems an important part of his growing up. Um, especially the subplot about the, uh, the passport and uh, uh, the saving of his Jewish uh, refusing. Was it based on uh, the real facts? It's not a personal experience, you know, I know I, I, I'm that stupid, you know, I never traveled anywhere, you know, my brothers and sisters, you know, I've been in East Germany because it's a European thing to, be, to visit the communist world, etc. You know, it's a something, you know, I wanted to have, you know, a, a, a very brief first chapter about Paul and family, and after that, and this first chapter would be not like a short story, but like a poem, you know, just, just a few images, and after that, I had this, this short story in mind, you know, about the trip, Russia, and, uh, and I thought yeah, that uh, for my father's generation, the big thing was uh, the, the, the freedom for North Africa, and mainly Algeria. That was his war, you know, that, that was his commitment, you know, to be for the freedom, to, to, to get some freedom for Algerian people, you know. And I thought that for my generation, the big issue, you know, when I'm realizing it, you know, was two things, you know, freedom, you know, for the European Jewish people, you know, the, the right to go back to Israel, you know, and also the, the fall of the war, you know, and I thought it would be nice to have a film which would be contemporary with the fall of the war, you know, and uh, so that's how the, 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 this pattern came, you know, and also, you know, knowing that I would make that film in uh, three blocks, you know, not one big, thick novel, you know, but three separated blocks, you know, I was trying to find, let's say, the song, which is some, you know, through, or the thread, which is going through all these three stories, you know. And this song, or this thread, was a Russian song. You know, when he's a kid, he's going to his grand house, a grand aunt house, you know, and he's meeting the beloved of his grand aunt. And he's learning Russian. And after that, fate makes him having this trip, you know, with school, in Russia, you know, in Minsk, where he has to give his passport you know, to another guy and to have a dog. And after that, the guy is so sure that he wants to go to, I would say, Benin, you know, the, the African country, Benin, yeah. Benin, yeah. He was so sure, you know, thinking that, you know, one day he would be an anthropologist in Africa. You know, but his teacher dies, and strangely enough, he finished in Tajikistan, in the Soviet Republic, you know. And so I thought that there was a sort of, you know, discreet Russian song which was sung during the whole film. So that's how I, I try to draw it. I don't know if I'm answering the question. And I know that, uh, you know, I don't know, did you read the, the, the book of uh, Lumila Ulitskaya, you know, Le Chapitre Vert? It's a great book about uh, Refusnik, I mean, a wonderful book, you know, the Refusnik stories, you know, always fascinated me when I was a kid and even a grown up. Thank you. Memory is, tricky, is is tricky, and I just wondered if Sophie was telling this story, what would be the major difference from Paul? You know, the girlfriend. Oh, uh, sorry, sorry. I'm not sure that if Esther would have... Would I, I, you know, I would 
arguments of who I guess our, our point of view would be quite different. I guess it would be quite different. But on the other hand, there is a thing that I love in Through the Bet, you know, and Through the Bet would be a look at in the writing process and on the shooting process too. It was the fact that uh, I would have this young uh, woman character appearing you know, in the middle of the film, and the main character is old. And she will can cannibalize the whole thing. She will take all the room. She will become. You know. So I was betting on the performance of Louis Wallace and I knew that one day during the shooting, you know, I would go and I would have to go to her and say, okay, girl, now you have to take the power on the film. You know, because this is what happened in Paul's life. Is that the definition of Paul is destiny. Is that Paul is nothing without destiny. Is that Paul is not belonging to friends or to his own stories, it's just belonging to, to Esther. You know. And I love the way you know, I was thinking of this character, I was asking you the American expression for that, you know, is that kind of girl who's taking all the room in the bed. You know, she's too much. She has too much. You know, she's taking all the room. You know, and Paul is tiny, Paul is shallow, you know. And then, so in that way, uh, I, I, I knew in the writing process, but I experienced it during the shooting process, you know, because of the dialogue you know, with the young actress, that uh, there's something which I think is heartbreaking, you know. It's, it's a, there is a very tiny scene, you know, where Pop, uh, Esther is asking Paul at the, at the beginning of their meeting, you know, will you, uh, will you call me? And Paul doesn't have a phone. And so his answer is, will you write me? And Esther is shrugging, you know, and we can guess that she's not right, writer, you know, that she's not that keen on letter. But the idea comes to her that she could become, who said, is it a very French way of thinking, you know, I don't know, her own novelist, that she will invent herself through this letter, that she will depict an adventure where she will be the queen, where she will be, become the heroine that she wanted to become, you know, and that strangely enough, she will have a price to pay, which is vulnerability. When he meets her, she was unvulnerable, you know, and suddenly, love happens to her, and then suddenly she has no defense any longer, she has no armor any longer. And she's vulnerable, and it's a terrible price to pay to become this heroine that she wanted so much to, to become. So in a way, I think that the, at the end of the film, the film just belongs to Esther. Esther is the film. She hates the film. It's, there is always this problem in French because of pronunciation here between hate eating and hating. <laughs> <laughs> so they are, they are <laughs> this is what I meant. <laughs> well, I said I want to ask you about the casting because she's uh, that's quite an extraordinary piece of casting. Both of them, but again, you know, the role of Esther, she's a very surprising figure right from the moment that she appears on the screen. Yeah. And I remember when we were doing the casting sessions and you know how she just stood out. Yeah, she, she's, she has, you know, is the kind of actress I can work with and she has too much face. You know, it's, it's too much. You know. Too much is great for the camera. Yeah. You know, uh, enough is not enough. You know, too much is good. You know, it's good. And, uh, and she had this uh, uh, mixture of uh, shyness, of arrogance in the same time, you know. And uh, so it was, yeah, it was, it was a tremendous experience to work with her. It, it's funny to you, know, because we met you know, on such a film, you know, you, we have to met, you know, like, you know, all the countries, you know, a lot of people, you know, to, to, to discover what your film is about. Yeah. You see, so, which means you have to meet um, a thousand people, yeah. you know, this one kind of people, you know, and I saw more experienced actors, and uh, very soon, you know, when there are few experiences, they all start to, they were all starting to bring me naturalism, you know, and I was working with them, and I was saying, that, please, could you st stop to act like the TV talking? You know, the cheap TV, you know, I mean, it just, you know, it doesn't bring a thing, you know, to, but these two, to have to, these uh, very new guys, you know, arriving, which are not formatted by any system before, you know, are open-minded, you know, and, uh, and I knew working with her that I was not a burden to her, you know, that, uh, that um, she would have the use of, uh, you know, and also it was really important for me to have actors, uh, you know, she was 17, it's young, you know, 
And that was nice to work with someone who was really significant, you know. And I'm thinking about the great actress who came in the system, the whole system, you know, and she was 14 years old, you know. And it was so great, you know, once again I'm thinking about him asking them, you know, it was so great to work with people who are that young, you know, and to create a common language, you know, and to have an artistic dialogue, to, to build an artistic dialogue in such kinds of things. I, I suppose that another way of saying it here would be we can say it's actors that aren't afraid to be big. Actors who are not afraid to be big. Yeah. 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 The opposite of the naturalism that you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. 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 I love, you know, and she, the, the, the way she, 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 she existed too much, you know, and, uh, the, 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 and there is, a, yeah, this uh, shyness and this arrogance and the same time as I was saying, you know, and, and, and she was, yeah, big because it's kind of easy, you know, and then there was this pride. She had, uh, she had the ability to, to, to have this pride, you know, and, uh, and uh, it's something also which moves me, you know, uh, uh, in Esther character, which is not that far from, from what Louis is in real life, um, is there is a certain weakness amongst all of us is uh, that uh, we want to be uh, admired for quality, you know, we want to be exceptional, like Esther is saying twice in the film, you know, am I exceptional? You know? But we want to be exceptionally intelligent or ex exceptionally clever or exceptionally beautiful. We need to be clever. But Esther wants just to be exceptional, period. You know, with no, you know, she's not talkative, she's not, big, she's not beautiful, she can be ugly or beautiful, who knows, you know. But she wants to be exceptional. You know, and she has this strength. You know? And I think about the scene, you know, and which is to, to me really heartbreaking. Uh, where Paul is committing a sin, he's asking to Esther, uh, and could answer to your question, you know, about you know, if the Esther, what would be Esther's point of view about the story, you know, uh, about the, the memories. He's saying, uh, uh, what will you do when you will be graduate? And she's looking at him with such a pride, and she's saying, I will disappoint you. It's a paradox, you know, and it's a paradox which breaks my heart. Um, I wanted to talk about the music because it's so important to the film. I mean, Rick Rapp said the score, and then also the songs that you've chosen for the movie, which I would imagine as a whole, that's a real work in and of itself, making up the texture of the movie. Um, I would imagine that it was really, really fun. Very fun? Actually, today with the problem with the rights, it's not fun any longer. It was okay. fun. No, that part's not fun. fun. Today is a nightmare. Yeah. I have to negotiate the rights for each song. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I mean, yeah. listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, you know, you know, obviously I used few songs which were familiar to me you know, in, in these days. And it was important for me to have this voice or that voice. You know, it was important for me to have some you know, Keep up in the film, it's, it's a commitment you know, to, 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 to me. But uh, I was trying to find what kind of music they are listening. So there is a thing which is, uh, you know, I don't know. There is a line, you know, of, of Paul, when Paul is playing, is, 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 uh, is Matthew, where he's saying, I realize now that we were poor, that we were a poor couple. You know? And when we lived, when we experienced it, you know, we didn't notice the fact that we were poor. And, you know, so with the guy I was working with, you know, on the score, I told him, you know, we have to use some mod music. Music, you know, but not the early mods, you know, not the boom, you know, but, uh, do you say mods? Yeah? Mod, 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 yeah. modern, modern. No, yeah, yeah from the mod movement, you know. And yes. I, I remember my, 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 my girlfriend asking me, asking to me, you know, during the practice, you know, but what is exactly the mod, you know, and it's a rock and roll? And I was saying, no, no, it's white trash, you know, English trash, you know, but influenced, deeply influenced by black American music, you know, it's mod. And, you know, and I was trying to find, and she was saying, yeah, but I still don't get it, you know. So I look at through the internet to try to find the definition of the mod movement, you know, the jam and all this but thing. But over here it's called New Wave. Yeah. You call it new wave? Yeah. No, it's not new wave. That's what we call it here. The jam. No, it's not. Uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I love this definition that I found on the internet. You know, it's uh, how to live with dignity when what you have to experience is undignity. You know, how to be arrogant when you are poor. You know, and that's the kind of music that they are listening. You know, the specials, 
the jam, you know, that kind of music. You know. And so, and I, I'm thinking about you know, the, all these characters, and I thought it would be a nice way, a nice song, you know, to, 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 to draw this group. Well, it's a mix of there's the special set there with the sky and the two tone music, and then there's the jam, which you know, we call it anyway. Um, <laughs> you know, and, then, and then, you know, hip hop from um, uh, De La Soul, you know, and then that beautiful Ethiopian piece. Yeah. The, the Ethiopian piece. Oh, the Ethiopian piece yeah, is great, yeah, yeah. He's dreaming about, you know, foreign countries, dreaming about Africa, you know, and you have the Ethiopian piece, yeah. and she's coming from the 60s, yeah. yeah. And then uh, with Gregor Atel's score, I, I had the impression that. Maybe he listened to Vertigo. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he listened to the score for Vertigo, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm harassing him. I'm harassing him. <laughs> but then, you know, it's a thing that I'm, I'm really proud of is, you know, it's a better, you know, in Vertigo, so we have the airline score that we, we all know and that we all revere. You know, but I, I heard, you know, just on the radio by chance, you know, because of the, the CD was not very really good. This day, few, few years ago, this piece of Stravinsky that you can hear at the very last, you know, on the very, very last you go off, the you go off readers, you know, the, uh, which were adapted by Stravinsky. And so, Vertigo is from 58, yeah, yeah? And, uh, and the piece of Stravinsky from 68. And I, you know, the first time I, I listened to it on the, the, the radio, uh, the Stravinsky piece, I thought, but it's a ripoff of Vertigo, <laughs> the same score, you know. And I realized, and I love to dream about that, you know, that Hugo Wolf song, you know, I, there was a big concert, you know, that I'm, I'm dreaming about this concert, you know, in Los Angeles, and there were two guys in the audience, and one was Stravinsky, and the other one, you know, who was Bernard Herrmann. And they have been both influenced, you know, by the melancholy of the Hugo Wolf songs, you know, and all that. And so what I love in the Stravinsky piece, it's, it's a tribute from the noble arts, to the humble art, you know, and I always listen to this piece as a tribute to Herman, to, to, to Bernard Herman. That's all, that's why I chose to go for that piece at the end of the film. And it's true, that's his last piece. Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, the rear Roxanne of the credits was quite impressive. I must tell you, I listened to every single word she sang, and it really brought me back to a time in my own life. But my question has to do with the teacher. Uh, that wonderful scene where she says, pick out some music, and then she sort of falls asleep, and he doesn't know what... Tell, talk about that scene and why it's in the film. Um, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's as if she was already dying, when she would die. She's just falling asleep, and she's reading Freud, and taking a book, and taking a book, and book. Uh, you know, this... You know, I was thinking that the, the, the distance is, in a way, start from, you know, I try to do, I try to do something different from my sex life, you know, but there is a few things which are in common. And there is one thing, I mean, that's where the, the, the name of the database is coming from, is from that original scene that my hero committed, you know, which is the fact that he lost his mother and never grieved her, you know. And a few times in the film, you know, he's saying, my mother committed suicide, I don't give a shit. He said it once, and then twice, and then three times. He said, if you are saying that you don't care, why are you repeating that two, three times in the film? You know, so, and I think that there is a sin that he committed, or a wound, that he has to heal. And the only person who can heal it is for his grandparents, and later in his life, you know, the teacher, the revered teacher, you know, the, 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 and there is, and there is a scene which is, it's beyond, you know, it's just images you know, that I had, you know, it's not a dialogue, you know. The, the image of this woman falling asleep, and uh, what I would call the privilege de la fille, du, du visage noir, the privilege of, of, of a black, of an African face. And you know, and when his teacher is dead, he's just using, you know, a thing to, to paint him, to, to, to have a black face, and to, to become a minstrel, a stupid minstrel, mm -hmm. you know to warm the beloved face in the beer. You know? So it's, I know that it's images which are moving me more than I can express it. Yeah. 
Um, I'm wondering, in the writing process at any point, did you consider bringing Esther out of memory back into the present the way you do with Jean-Pierre? Mm. Oh. Bringing her out of memory and bringing her back, back, back to the present of the film, the way you do with Jean-Pierre. Did you consider bringing Esther no, to she's the present well done. of the film the way that you do with Mathieu as Paul at the end? I get it, I get it. Uh, I think that the, the, the old film is built on something uh, that I experienced in the process of making the film and in showing the film after that, in releasing the film and promoting the film. It's a lack, the lack of Emmanuel de Vos. The film can exist because Emmanuel de Vos is not in there. You know, because you know, Paul is missing Esther. You know, he's thinking about her and missing her. And the film couldn't exist you know, so there was sort of melancholy in the fact that, you know, I had to add this one to Emmanuel to say, actually, you won't be in that one because the film is just missing you. The film is, you know, thinking about you when you are not here. I think that the, 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 the film is built on that hole, you know, that I, I tried to, 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 you know. And so, yeah, I was discussing this morning about this scene, you know, where it's just like a tribute to Emmanuel de Rose, when you can see Matthew, you know, on the bridge, of paper coming to his face, and Emmanuel is missing me so much. You know, I am missing Emmanuel so much, and so it's, it's something, I mean, you know, so it was pretty yeah, on the lack. That's how I could The presence of us just fell through the yeah. other lack. Yeah. I think we have to wrap it up. We have to sign, but thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> she was both Jean Moreau and Brigitte Bardot for me. But first, yes, and she was Roger. You know, every time she was on in the frame, it was just like. Yes. And one that film what very, very her. agitating. It's one of the most agitating films I've seen. Before. Yes. Uh, and what happened to her when that that movie failed? You know? What? 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 I think he asked the same question for all the non verbal questions. You know, he used the cinema to look at uh, a time and a place, and memory is always a part of it because he's, his characters are remembering. I want to know why he cast the actor that he did to play his character. Matthew? Yes. I mean, Matthew is a wonderful actor, but you know, when you would you find, oh, who's going to play me? You know, who's going to play me? How do you think about that? I just would, think about that. would like to hear how he talks about it, you know? Yes, yes. I did, yeah. Uh, particularly Kent, I think. In the why did I hear so well? I don't know why I heard so well today. Because you didn't spend that much time inside the class.
heard the question. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, someone has to ask a question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they all these people well, sit there. Well, you were should interested in, in, in the music. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, but the last song, was, I mean, the, the mixture of the 80s rap, which was not gangster music, you know? Yeah. Uh, and it was throughout the, what, what they played. Yeah. The, well, why did they use Bernard Herman so much? That's a question for him to answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought he was talking about Bernard Herman. Yes, yes. Huh? I was bored a lot watching it. But it kept. But somehow, I still was kept in. in my interest was still kept up. Yeah, of uh, course. But her face. Well, she her was amazing. Face. Is she, she Brigitte she Bardot? Occupies the whole. Yeah. Well, and he said he wanted her to. You know. Yes. Yeah. 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 And what? And why he didn't have her in the, come back in the end, when when that that voluptuous youthful beauty is gone. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what happens to that kind of woman? You know, it's like looking at Moreau and seeing how her face is ravaged by her life. You know, her yeah, life is from yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you say something about it? No, I didn't ask. I, uh, uh, it's a uh, question uh, I wanted. Yeah, you want to it, it, I'm glad I asked the question about if it had been about her point of view, how would it have been different? Because it opens him up to talking about the film differently. <coughs> and, and, and he went back to that to my question when he talked about he wanted her to dominate every every frame that she was in. You know, she was the biggest yeah. she took yeah, up yeah. the whole she's space the star, of the day. Yes. Yeah. So uh, and, 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 and he was a little man. Yeah, and yeah, he thinks yeah, of himself yeah. as a little man. And he is a little man. Yeah. And another thing I was coming to the is the relationship with his mother and then with her Yes. Sister. Well that was the, Yeah, so that that's a piece that scene was so tender where where he she says to him Pick some music and then she falls and doesn't know if she's dead or not. You know, he goes over to see. He doesn't go to kiss her. He goes over to see if she's dead, and it is the mother. I mean, yeah. it is, and the fact that she's an African. I mean, it's. it's I mean, it's yeah. A, yeah. that's one of the most beautiful scenes in the film. For me. Yeah, he really, he really, he really uh, substitute his mother because when his mother died, he said, "Well, fuck it." Yeah. And when she died, yeah. he, 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 he collapsed. He collapsed. Yeah. yeah. And he said, yeah. Huh? But he had never dealt with his mother's death. He said he didn't, you know, he didn't, you know, he never dealt, and this other woman allowed him to finally fall yeah, apart, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's, that's a beautiful part of it. And it, 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 young mother's not that interesting to me. I have to tell you, probably. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes, yes, yes. yes but, yeah. uh, <laughs> They all read books. I, I, I would have wanted. I'm not a student to do. Um, do young French kids read books the way they did at that point? Yeah. You know, Godard has always had people, books are always around yeah. his character. Yeah. Today they'd be on the computer, the Twitter, the you know yeah, all yeah, the digital yeah. stuff. <laughs> or maybe I'm being unfair to them. I don't know. This is tough. I have to go to an MRI. Right now. Oh, yeah? An MRI. You know what that is? Yeah. The, the, the x-ray your head. Because um, of my I, 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 Oh, I know. I know you're not going to So I'm going to miss the Michael Moore film. I'm going to see it tonight. Oh, Jesus. But the press I, I, conference I, I, is yours? Was, no, but that's yours. It, it, okay. Is it see it tonight, the film? Yes. Ah, I took it. Yeah, yeah. No. But uh, the press... Uh, uh, and we'll discuss tomorrow. Hello, Michael. Tomorrow. I can yeah, so Yes, okay. Yes. Yes. I'm leaving to Rio on Monday. Are you invited me to come with you? Yeah. To the well, festival? Yeah. How long? I'm coming. I'm coming back. I'm going to try to come back to the press conference. Okay. Of Michael Moore. Okay. Oh yeah. I find him obnoxious. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs>
for, 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 for everyone else, you'd, you'd have to pay for it. So remember, I asked, I asked for a uh, hot water, just a cup of hot water, they were like a dollar. <laughs> I'll bring my own team back. I still need to try some of it. That's why I really want to see Good for you. Good for you. Yeah, so that's right. Yeah, that's right. 